Welcome to this session on human computer interactions with MATLAB. I am Mona Lisa Pal, and along with me, uh, Shavik and Prasoon is there in the audience. So, uh, we both, Shavik and me, uh, are going to present today. Uh, while I am presenting, if you have any queries, uh, Shavik and Prasoon would be happy to address them in the chat box and other way around when Shavik is presenting. So please feel free to uh, have any queries uh, or you can unmute yourself and ask me uh, as and when required. So this is the agenda for today. Uh, I'm going to briefly describe about wh who we are from MathWorks and uh, the machine learning workflow in general and how does that uh, relate to human computer interactions. Uh, I'm going to also demonstrate a brief uh, de demo on human activity recognition. And then I will uh, hand over to Shavik, who is going to demonstrate uh, how robotic processes arm is uh, simulated and deployed. So uh, who, who, what is MathWorks, or who are we? Uh, MathWorks are the uh, makers of MATLAB and Simulink. And, uh, our uh, product, uh, MATLAB, is uh, so popular that sometimes uh, people don't uh, recognize MathWorks. It, instead, uh, we are known by the name of MATLAB. MATLAB is a technical computing platform. It is a code-based platform and uh, used by several scientists and researchers across the world. Along with uh, the basic code platform, there are 100 plus toolboxes that are dedicated to different domains across science and engineering. Uh, beside MATLAB, there is another product that is built inside of MATLAB that is known as Simulink, which is a graphical interface. Uh, we don't normally write code here. However, MATLAB written codes can be integrated with Simulink. As you can see on the top, picture. Uh, it is a block diagram based environment and primarily helps in designing dynamic systems. That is systems that varies with uh, systems whose behavior varies with time. Uh, we, uh, take, we have uh, different industries where we work with. Uh, the top 10 automobile manufacturers use our platforms the top 10 aerospace companies as well, and three out of top five internet companies who are Google, Facebook, and Amazon. These are some of the logos that you might be familiar with, which we are also associated with, uh, and they use MATLAB for building their own products, uh, such as Ford, uh, Toyota, Facebook, Korean Air, which is an airway, etc. And besides this, three primary industries, there are several other industries such as financial services, medical devices, communication infrastructure that also uses our product. If I uh, go into this particular link, it will give me stories about and videos about how different industries are using MATLAB in their particular domain. So without further delay, let me introduce you to the platform of MATLAB. So uh, this is uh, the basic uh, platform that opens up when you uh, launch MATLAB. There are four segments in it. The segment which I am in is known as com command window. Whatever command I write here, that gets executed. On the left hand side, I have the current folder. And on the right hand side, I have the workspace. So let's say if I write a command a equal to two, that is just assigning a value to a variable. That variable appears inside the workspace by itself. And I don't have to manually uh, write a command to display that variable. Whatever uh, I write here, uh, that gets displayed here. So on and so forth. I can do a mathematical operation just like any other computing platform. Also, as the name suggests, MATLAB stands for matrix laboratory. So I can also create matrices. For example, this means from 0 to 10 in step size of 0.1. And this semicolon, which I wasn't using before, is just to suppress this kind of output from appearing in the screen. So here you can see that T variable appeared in the workspace, but the output was just not shown here. 
Similarly, I can do operations on this uh, kind of variables. And now it evaluates the sign of t at each of the time points. So I have the time from 0 to 10 seconds and sign evaluated for each of the time points. I can select these two and without writing the plotting commands or instruction, I can go to the plot step and out of this so many uh, plotting options out there, I can select one that suits me. For example, let me draw the 2D line plot and it will give me the output for sine wave from 0 to 10 seconds. I can also uh, manually edit different parameters. For example, I can go into the uh, property editor over here, select the line curve and, uh, and change its color. Or uh, I can add markers onto it. And then if I want to reproduce this multiple number of times, I, if I want to automate this process, I can go into the file options and generate a code out of it. I did not write a single line of code. I just did some manual steps that I want to uh, replicate for large number of um, operations. And I just uh, generated a code by using that uh, code generation option. When I want to reproduce this for any other variables, I just need to call this function and uh, with the parameters of x and y. You can see here, this was generated just now. It was not a pre-built command. I don't want to save this for the time being. But this is a volatile workspace. If I uh, clear the workspace with the command clear, these commands are lost. If I clear the command window with this command, all the uh, steps that we did are lost. So we want to save those steps inside something known as a script. There are two options over here, new script and live script. Uh, let me show you what live scripts look like. When I click on this, it opens up like this. And whatever I write here again, I can execute, uh, let's say, run section. And A equal to 2 is appearing again over here. Instead of appearing in the workspace or on the command window, which I have to go back and check, it the solution here appears directly on the live script itself. Uh, there are other options why we use a, or recommend to use a live script. Here, instead of writing a code, I can also switch to text mode and write different uh, different uh, instruction or different uh, sentences, just like in a Word document. So I just wrote some text over here. I can also format them, as you can see. I can uh, make it bold or make it into a title, heading, etc. Make bulleted list out of it. I can also insert, uh, let's say I want to insert images or hyperlinks or equations. I can also do that. So this is generally about a live script, but I already have a live script with me. So I'm just going to go back and open that. I don't want to save this one. Let's say I open this one. So you can see there is a title to this document, different section headings over here, and different text, images, hyperlinks, equations, everything is there, right? So what does this particular uh, code does? Uh, it just creates a sine wave. I just want to plot a sine wave over here, and uh, now it has appeared. I can also do some kind of interactive operations by zooming into the code, updating this particular code to have this kind of exact output every time I simulate this code. So I can also restore the view back to its original uh, form. But I am saying this as an interactive notebook. So what else can I do? Here, you, if you see all the frequency, amplitude, phase, etc., of the sine wave have been hard coded. I can also make them variables. If I have to make them as variable options, I have to go back and change each of these uh, values manually. Instead, what I can do is insert a control option. Let's say I want to insert a numeric slider over here. How do I do that? Or how do I format this particular numeric slider? 
frequency right so frequency cannot be starting from zero frequency should at least start from 0 0.1 maximum value can be anything for the timing let's say i say it 10 or 10.1 and in the step size of one so it increases like 0 0.1 1.1 2.1 1 .1, so on and so forth okay. now i can vary this slider and you see the graph is changing by itself you can also switch the view to have the output on the right side and you can see as i vary this slider the output changes so live script is very good to have such kind of interactive controls as well as uh, other uh, text and images options another best feature of live script that i like is to export this document or export this code file into a document and that document can be anything export into a pdf export into a word file latex and i can have my project report as well where i have the code itself along with the text that i want to write so this was all about matlab in general a very brief introduction of matlab now what if i want to do some kind of operations what are the operations possible the theme of the uh, this particular session was hci or human computer interactions so for, before that let me jump into describing what machine learning is machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence artificial intelligence came long back about uh, i think 50 decades ago uh, and it is to mimic human intelligence into computer on the other hand machine learning is uh, to simulate or emulate the behavior of uh, a code without explicitly programming so having the data and output the code can learn by itself or the program can learn by itself what uh, should be the ideal behavior so that the output can be predicted for an unknown input and in case of deep learning uh, the features which are essential for uh, machine learning to learn the object's property those properties in deep learning can be automatically extracted so deep learning is the now latest trend which is an end-to-end -end learning uh, for uh, and is also a form of machine learning so why matlab for machine learning if you look into it machine learning does is not a standalone subject or ai is not a standalone subject ai comes in along with several domains or several domain of application and as i mentioned matlab has 100 plus toolboxes to help you simplify or accelerate the domain pro, uh, analysis so that ai can be simplified or accelerated Again, uh, how is machine learning different from traditional programming? So in case of traditional programming, let's say I use a formula of E equals MC square. So in that case, I have the formula or the program itself. I have the mass of the body and speed of light and etc. And I can predict the output, which is the energy, right? So that uh, computation is uh, taken care in case of traditional programming that computation can be automated but what if i don't know the formula or don't know what algorithm needs to be applied in that case multiple data and multiple outputs can be fed into the computer such that the computer by itself learns the relation between the data and the output and that is known as the model and outputs the trained model for having unknown such kind of data predict similar kind of output so that is how traditional programming and machine learning differs in case of human computer interactions it is a interaction between human and computer as the name says in wikipedia it says that design and use of computational te uh, computer technology focused on interfaces between people and computers so this is just a man machine interaction having some kind of interface between us so what can these interfaces be such as these interfaces can be uh, let's say mobile phone or a remote or your uh, car anything it can be an interface that has a computational capability between human and that machine 
so we say machine learning is everywhere but uh, if there is an unknown problem do we go ahead and apply machine learning so when is machine learning appropriate to be applied so the first case is if the relation that needs to be learned it is complex in nature is non linear in nature and some handwritten rules are not sufficient to learn such kind of behavior it's not a simple if else kind of a rule again that model needs to adapt to certain changes what if i want to forecast weather but my data or the mod or the uh, computer has only seen data for summer can it predict data for winter also can it predict or uh, forecast the weather for winter also so in such cases the model needs to be adaptive in nature also my model needs to scale well let's say i want to do some kind of statistical processing in excel that is uh, i can do it manually by selecting and entering commands and all but what if i want to process thousands of excel files do i need to manually go and process the statistical options in each of these files i will surely miss one of the files and do processing over another file twice and so on and so forth so to avoid that i have to automate that entire workflow so to scale into large data set that is another area of machine learning again uh, what is the machine learning workflow fortunately in matlab we have support for different kinds of file speed uh, different type of structured or unstructured data by structured data i mean which has values or can be converted into values such as signals or pixel values and unstructured data are something that that does not have a uh, that does not have numbers associated behind it such as text uh text is one of the example uh, there are other uh, kind of databases which may be local to your computer as well as may be stored elsewhere also there can be various sensor uh, across your current geographical location or all over the world so data can be from anywhere and uh, matlab has uh, options to access such kind of data uh, over uh, all these kinds of data types now is the data perfect some sensor might not be recording at some point of time some lines may have communication channels may have interference for example uh, the line noise that we say that uh, comes along our along with our electricity power 50 hertz signal that needs to be filtered out when we do signal processing so for such kind of uh, noises or artifacts pre processing is very much essential as well as sometime data itself is very large in dimension for example uh, the wallpaper of a very high resolution uh, Uh, window or high resolution screen is very large it has got uh, millions of uh, pixel points do i need all those points can i reduce that data without losing any information and have less number of points such that the model complexity reduces so having similar kind of data reduction or transformation is again essential i mentioned something about features right for example the picture over here it tries to distinguish between a uh, drinking pot so how do i um, determine which is a drinking pot or not can a bowl be drinking pot can a plate be drinking pot so for example here it says that the cups or mugs are distinguished by the presence of handles now once the features are selected the next step is to create or train model on it the model can have different parameters and those parameters also needs to be optimized to have the best model one model can be performing better than the other let's say model a performs better than the uh, another model model b but does my model a performs better than optimized version of model b that is again a question so even if one of the model performs uh, could in in uh, in using the default values does not necessarily mean uh, it will perform best in case of uh, all the all such applications
so model validation comes next what does model validation means my if my training goes well well enough for example let's say uh, when we go ahead and appear in case of an exam if known questions comes I, i should be able to answer most of them what if all the questions are unknown to me what do i do does my model perform well enough in unknown scenario that is known as model validation and that is where the model should actually perform well to establish that the learning is uh, has significantly taken place finally most of the research actually ends here however if you notice ai applications are all deployable applications that are used in uh, society so that application must be usable in case of uh, other people who are non domain experts so how do i transfer this model or this entire workflow into a usable deliverable product that can be used so that can be a app using matlab's app designer that can be deployed into web or given to some other person as a stand alone application i can use or uh, i can collaborate with other codes or transfer my code into other platforms for example i can transfer my code into hdl codes or c codes and have them deployed into arduino or raspberry pi or any other embedded hardware and have them as a part of larger applications so matlab has an option to have this entire workflow integrated that is one of the reason matlab is known for this machine learning workflow so now let us go over to classification workflow in general so if i have imported data that is generally partitioned into two sets the training set and an unknown set the test set such that the test set is not shown to the model and we can validate or check whether the trained model is performing good in the test set in that case the unknown uh, the known data uh, that is shown to the model that undergoes this kind of steps which are pre processing then model training which can be classification for discrete output such as yes or no or regression for continuous output such as at uh, what should be the temperature to call it summer or winter at what uh, temperature let's say the food uh, boils or not so those are not very hard thresholds and depends on other parameters so what is regression it is an uh, estimation of unknown let's say weather forecast or uh, prediction of stock prices etc so have the model trained in uh, in one of the channels and have them validated against the unknown data now so now what we do is have the uh, same pre processing steps for the unknown data again because the unknown data can also have noise etc and have the trained model now predict the status of that unknown data now i can compare that prediction with known values and see what error it has generated if my error is minimum then my model is uh, very well suited how much that error is that is actually dictated by what application you are doing how uh, stochastic my data is now let's say uh, we have a mobile version of matlab that you can uh, notice over here it can be downloaded from play store as well as uh, app store in ios or android and it has different sensors let me play this particular video it ha- it is the command window structure in the option there are sensors and now you can see there are different sensors acceleration magnetic field orientation of the mobile angular velocity and position sensor which is the gps also i can record pictures from camera let's say i want only to log this acceleration data and i can log it on my device or on matlab so i just want to log it for the timing on my device i start the recording over here you can see the time stamp is increasing and then i can save this sensor log and just uh, type out a name for it and click on this save option you can see one log is now saved 
if I want to see where that is saved, uh, you can see it is getting synced to some kind of cloud. So where is this uh, sensor log once saved from my mobile is going to appear? It appears over here. It says that MATLAB drive mobile sensor data. Now what is MATLAB drive? I have the desktop MATLAB. I have something in the cloud that is known as online version of MATLAB that is totally browser based and does not need any kind of installation. I can also have MATLAB on mobile, running on mobile. And all these are synced via that MATLAB drive such that all this is related to your own single account. You don't need to have different accounts for each of these platforms. That is all synced to one MathWorks account and that uh, information exchange between different platforms takes place through this kind of MATLAB drive, which is very similar to what you have for Google Drive or OneDrive or Dropboxes, just for file exchange. Again, uh, MATLAB online does not require any kind of installation, round, runs totally on cloud, hence it does not depend on your device infrastructure as well as it is very easy to collaborate or share files, work on the same file using that MATLAB drive option. So without uh, further delay, let me show you that application. Now, once I have that sensor log data, I log that sensor accelerator data, right? So now once I have that accelerated data, I can process, do some kind of pre-processing step on that acceleration data and do a DSP concept, use DSP concepts such as sampling, peak picking, etc. to analyze that data. Now, let me go back to MATLAB and click on this particular. Okay, where does that, uh, before I go there, let me show you what MATLAB online is. Uh, sir, is my screen still visible? I am on the Google Chrome. Yes, visible. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, if you can see now, I'm opening matlab.mathworks.com, which is the online version of MATLAB, and that opens on the browser itself. It is not launched from my desktop, uh, and it has the same platform, the current folder, workspace, the command window, new script, live script, everything, and it syncs by default with the MATLAB drive, as you can see from here. And it says that mobile sensor data, inside that there are different kind of data. You can see the sensor log.mat appearing over here that I just saved. And if I go back over here, I have copied that into my local uh, folder. And inside that, I can open this particular live script that loads that data. So there is an accelerometer data. So let me first uh, show you how does that data look like. If I just run this sensor log dot mat, it should load that data along with x, x, y, and z coordinates and timestamps. So now if I go back into the workspace, you can see the acceleration uh, data or accelerometer data has timestamp x, y, z three channels on it, and if I carry on with the processing, let me plot all the three axes. You can see the data is very noisy in nature. What I want to do with this kind of data, I want to create a Fitbit-like application. I want to count how many steps I have taken by walking. So I can just take the magnitude of the three coordinates, x, y, z, three channels, and then plot just a single channel data. So this becomes my magnitude of the acceleration, but it is still noisy in nature. And another thing you can see, uh, because of gravity, all the value is positive in nature. So one very common application for signal processing is known as mean centering. I just want to subtract the mean of this from here. Uh, so what I can do is again execute this and subtract just the mean so that there is no effect of gravity. I plotted that against the same timestamp, and now you can see the mean is around zero value, but the peaks are still, uh, the noise is still there. What can I do next is to have, I can do some kind of smoothening, but I can uh, very well see that there are very sharp peaks on it. So those peaks are when I have taken the steps. So I can find out a threshold from here 
and find use the find picks command and then figure out based on that threshold how many steps i have taken i can again plot if my picks have been correctly identified or not this was the command based workflow however for counting the picks if i uh, do a section break over here uh let's say i want to do the section break over here i have all the data executed and loaded into the workspace so here i can install something known as a life task i want to find picks right so that is find local extrema you can click on that and that loads a app like interface where i have drop down options just to select what is happening so let's say i want to select uh, the acceleration right so my uh, magnitude of accelerometer data without gravity so that should be my data input data and default is uh, by time uh, time stamps in the x axis by default so i want to select the maxima and here it says the minimum prominence is zero so wherever there are peaks it has found out 75 peaks in the data so wherever there are peaks it has found out you can see in very small peaks also it has uh, detected so i want to have a larger threshold let's say i want to have a threshold at let's say 4 okay so if i increment this value to 4 and uh, execute it says 33 steps and you can see this green button for a uh, different kind of life task it is on auto run option for this life task if i hide this button by just clicking on this uh, arrow it is just only one line and it says finds out the maximum indices for uh, which is equal to the local maxima in this particular signal which is the magnitude without gravity so uh when i want to give submit this as a project i can have this line or i can have this interface or if i want to know more details what function it has used i can click on this show code option and then have the code in itself to to reproduce these steps for example here what it function it has used is is local max i don't know what local max uh, does or is there any other options that i can vary for is local max so what can i do is right click on this and go help on selection i click on this and it gives me the documentation i can open it on the bigger window and read out the documentation along with various examples it has given for different kind of uh, different kind of options so this was our step counter that i created but uh, based on uh, that accelerometer or mobile data what else can i do i can classify human activity so if i go into this particular file and uh, there is an inbuilt command okay it also loads uh, some data that takes into uh takes into account the human activity different kind of human activity and uh let me show you what it has loaded uh, from this particular file it has loaded the buffer data buffer data has trained test and validated data and i just extracted some statistical features as trained features what were my statistical features mean standard deviation etc for x y z 3 uh, accelerometer data so now i want to call a classification module because it is human activity recognition so i want to uh, do that without writing much code so i want to call this classification learner thing let me just run this and see what happens it takes a while to load just give it some time yeah now it has loaded it is something known as uh, it is a matlab app it has opened up because of this option known as classification learner but also if i go back here and click under apps there are numerous other apps over here and i can just scroll down below and see there are 100 plus apps because i mentioned that this is a workflow of machine learning sorry for that 
there is a this is an workflow for machine learning i have to go under this option of machine learning and deep learning and i will find different kind of uh, kinds of app classification learner deep network regression learner so on and so forth i have just opened this particular app which is the classification learner by writing its command or i can click on that to open it so now i go here and click on this plus sign to start a new session of classification if you remember our input data was trained features which had the statistical features as well and our response variable was the human activity there are five categories of human activity and if i start the session with some cross validation to separate the data into train and validate set so now i have this kind of scatter plot loaded the scatter plot is between x standard and x mean but i can also vary this let's say i want to do with z mean you can see by z mean uh, the vertical coordinate of the mobile you can see this two green and purple which is the sitting and laying is uh, very well separated from all the other walking upstairs walking downstairs and walking uh, coordinate and if i had that x uh, mean versus x uh, standard that also very well separates the laying so on and so forth so i just want to train this classifier i don't know which classifier suits well let's start with this and uh, let me go and use this use parallel option and click on train button so it says queued and now it says training and let's see what kind of accuracy it gave me quite a reasonably a good accuracy 90.8 which is good enough uh let's see if i can increase that so if you uh, know there are multiple kind of uh, classification algorithms decision tree discriminant analysis naive bayesian support vector machine nearest neighbor and finally ensemble classifiers which are uh, a group of classifiers that can be trained and then the majority decision of that group of classifier is taken into account so for ensemble of classifier let me use this boosted trees and see if that improves the classification accuracy or not uh, let it train for a while and within a few seconds it should give me the result okay now the classification accuracy has decreased uh, not good right so let me try some other kind of ensemble classifier now let's say back trees does that improve the classification accuracy uh, let me increase this window a bit now if you notice the classification accuracy has increased to 96.1 which is excellent like uh, 90 and uh, 96 uh so now i can see the confusion matrix which is the matrix between true classes and predicted classes and here you can see on the diagonal all the true classes which have been correctly predicted are there and if you notice maximum of the walking classes walking classes has been walking upstairs downstairs which was the true classes have been wrongly predicted as let's say walking upstairs was misclassified as walking downstairs or both upstairs and downstairs are classified as walking so those kind of uh, mismatches are there but these two classes has been well separated so this kind of information you can get from the classification uh, from the confusion matrix and as you can notice this entire classification process has been done in few seconds if i had to write the code for everything it would take me a lot of time however i can extract the function or generate the function the code based uh, approach right from this classification learner app itself or export the trained model also so because of testing while testing i would only want the trained model let me go ahead and export the trained model so it says uh, gives the name trained model for this ensemble back classifier and i click on okay so in the workspace now the trained model appears so it also appears with the command let me uh, increase the screen size and it says if i use uh, with some uh, on some unknown table if i use this particular function trained model dot predict function it can give me the class of that particular or the class labels of the observations in that particular unknown table t let me go back to my live script again it said uh, it can do uh, some kind of validation uh, feature extraction in which it has done and then use that uh, 
use that predict thing uh, predict function trained model dot predict function to see what kind of uh, result it gets for the validation thing so now you see the accuracy accuracy or the train training accuracy is 84 percent and from the confusion chart you can again see laying and sitting it has 100 percent uh, accuracy and for the walking models it has some kind of mismatch however it is uh, quite good enough for uh, distinction i can also optimize the model hyperparameters right from the classification learner app itself by tuning the, the different model parameters and for each of the tree let's say i was doing tree so i can do optimizable tree i'm just skipping that step for the timing and uh, showing uh, only the screenshot for it so if i just click on the optimizable tree and then execute the optimized model then i can get the uh, uh, optimized result for accuracy or optimized trained model and there here is a comparison chart that shows what kind of model is accurate uh, when i want a very fast comparison what kind of model i should use or when i have very low memory let's say i want to deploy it on a mobile phone with very low memory then what kind of model i should use uh, is the interpretability is sufficient enough uh, can i understand what features it has considered for uh, classifying different human activities so on and so forth right so i'm going to close this uh, app and go back to my presentation so that uh, i have shown you the step counter and human activity recognition by acquiring the data by itself however uh, let, uh, there are other applications also for human activity interaction for example philip uses uh, you must have heard the name of philip for different electronics and communication instruments so philip uses beam forming to see if a nearby person hears a uh, particular let's say for example you are watching a soccer game and uh, football game that is and uh, and you are very excited about it you want to hear it on a very loud voice but another person sitting right next to you might not be interested in football at all can that person be not disturbed by the audio uh, volume that you are listening into so for that it shows that same uh, television set is having two different kinds of output directed to two different people having having the same audio output at different volumes and this application can be scaled uh, up to attract different customers what uh, what they plan to do is to have a similar kind of model for uh, shopping malls and have one person listen into one audio channel let's say that can be a german channel and another person can listen into a hindi channel and another person might not hear any of the audio output at all so to have directed beam forming uh, this kind of uh, application is being used this was just a student competition a bunch of postgraduate student uh, came up with the most creative use of matlab and for this uh, they built a recommender system let's say uh, this is a picture or a poster of a movie they use the auto encoder uh, model which is a deep learning model to find out what kind of feature or latent space embedding is uh, appropriate to have this poster uh, encoded and in the latent space it show that for an input poster what is the nearest poster to it and it shows uh, the recommended similar movie as avengers similarly they have used this input to build different apps here they just select the input image and the recommended movie comes out this is from a comedy genre this is from a uh, horror genre so what, going forward how can this application be scaled up again for scaling up this application it can consider there are several other features just apart from the pixel value itself there are several other features such as review or user rating viewer rating that is or the length of the movie what language was the movie in etc and to give better recommendations for uh, for next cases 
just to mention this once more, uh, MATLAB or MathWorks also supports student competitions, and uh, you might be interested in encouraging your students to uh, participate in similar competitions, which which also offers complementary software for their support and guidance by us. Uh, there are text analytics application, which is a huge domain for HCI, human computer interactions. For example, pattern analysis, let's say there are different prescriptions and it uh, just scans through different prescription and analyzes what symptoms the patient has. Or let's say in hospital, there are, uh, it can scan the admission rate and see what are the unintended very short admissions that has happened just by analyzing different kind of text or unstructured data again uh, based on credit score let's say it needs to interpret what it is learning to giving a particular kind of uh, credit score or let's say a loan what based on what feature if i have to uh, implement that kind of an application in ai based on what particular feature that uh, loan is sanctioned or not uh, then again comes, um, you might have seen in Google or YouTube or in Twitter, uh, there are some posts that comes as training. So how are the training tweets appearing? So based on training data, let's say when World Cup is going on, so what uh, sentiment most of the people are having and that becomes a sentiment analysis application of uh, text analysis. Again, having different kinds of chatbots or for digital help or let's say for a medical uh, nurse or medical assistants, what kind of uh, digital chatbots can be applicable or uh, let's say when you are ordering in Domino's or having different kind of service requests. So that becomes another interaction between a human and a AI based application that is sitting on the other end in a computer. So this is just a question you might want to type in the chat box. What kind of data are you working on? There are several applications of HCI and I would uh, request uh, to show it to present from here on. Uh, thanks, uh, Mona Lisa. Um, yeah, it will be good to have some interactions at this point. Uh, if you are working on any type of data, if you can put in the chat window, what type of data you are working on? Is it like uh, signals, numerics, uh, text? Let me also share the screen in the in the uh, time being. Um, see. Um, and also, any questions, any thoughts at this point? Please feel free to just uh, post in the chat window. Uh, that will be useful for us. Video, okay. EEG signals, okay, sure. Uh, anybody else, any other questions or thoughts at this point? Uh, if you have, uh, please feel free to share. Uh, I'll keep on uh, talking about human uh, computer interactions on the discussions that we were doing. Um, so many of you are basically doing different sorts of image processing. Um, maybe some of you are, do, are probably doing audio processing and things like that. Um, any anybody else doing any other different type of human computer interaction? Um, like uh, anything else, like uh, it might be, you know, something like a prosthetic arm or uh, controlling an arm via uh, neuro signals, that sort of applications or anything you can think of you plan to do in the near future. Uh, if you have those sort of like something we are not discussing because human computer interaction, as you might understand, it might have a little different type of application. So if you have something in mind, which is we are not covering, uh, please let us know and then we can discuss with you separately as well on the technical front of those things. Um, so we wanted to give you in this uh, 90 minutes a flavor of different type of human computer interaction. Um, and those are definitely, uh, if we think about it, these are all signals or numeric data or text data or images or videos. So, I mean, whatever be the application, right? So uh, in the back end, it is essentially um, these sort of, sort of signals which come into the picture. Uh, by the way, uh, Mona Lisa, can you confirm is the screen visible and my audio is clear? 
Yes, yeah, sure, Vic. It's visible and your audio is clear. Thank you. Um, so let's let's move ahead with this. Um, and in the meantime, if again, if you think about any sort of applications uh, which you want to discuss on, let us know, and then we can discuss on that as well. Um, we can change the root of our presentation if needed, uh, you know, based on the interest. Um, so as Mona Lisa mentioned, uh, machine learning, deep learning with a human activity, you can see like how we are getting data from um, our body essentially. Um, you know, you can create a Fitbit or uh, that sort of an application. Um, so if we are running around uh, and you are running a marathon or something like a sprint race, you can calculate the number of steps you are taking. You can calculate your accelerations and things like that. So you can use your acceleration data from the MATLAB mobile, process it, and um, maybe if you want to classify it as in whether you are uh, running or walking. So those sort of things can be pretty easily done with the tools you have already have. Um, I mean, essentially in MATLAB, you can do the processing and then uh, everybody has smartphones. So you have sensors anyway. Um, so we'll talk about uh, our different sort of applications as well, which we worked on. Um, so this was one of them. So this was a, a inhuman telerobotic um, surgery so this this doctor is sitting here and uh, he's doing a surgery where the patient is not in this ot the patient is in a different country um so that was done and uh, they have been using they have done using model based design which is using matlab and simulating we will talk a little bit about it um, and as uh, you know dinesh sir mentioned all type of data so that's precisely there can be different types of data and also there is a uh, uh, correlation of different disciplines, right? So when you are doing any sort of this application, uh, you have control systems, you have real-time systems analysis. So all those things come together when we want to perform a, this type of an application. And this is a crucial application, right? This is a surgery. Um, so we need to make sure that everything goes right here. Um, so this was one example. If you want to read more about this, you can look into this. And one of the crucial things is, you know, when doctors are uh, involved in this, they are not doing coding hands-on. That that's that does not work in this domain because they are not coders. Um, so if, if for a coder, it is okay to write codes. And what we do, as as Mona Lisa mentioned, you can use all those different type of apps and uh, different types of uh, sort of drawing platforms, as we call it, for Simulink. We'll we'll talk about it, where we don't need to write code. We just uh, sort of draw what we think and that is what helps in modeling and analysis of this type of systems all uh, right so another example is uh, for this drummer so we worked with this institute called georgia tech in us and what happened for this person is uh, this person essentially lost one of his arm unfortunately in an accident um, and then what happened was uh, he is a drummer so he needs to play his drums uh, but he has one uh, hand essentially where he can play the, the drumstick but the other one was not functioning uh, so can can something be done so that this can be taken care of right uh, and there come again an intervention of human computer interface uh, because what uh, was done for this project is uh, you know if there, there was a primary so this hand he can play uh, the stick and this was an artificial, it's a prosthetic drummer, prosthetic drum hand. Uh, so you can see here, these are all prosthetics. These are connected to his arm here. Um, and this contains two sticks. So one is this primary and one is the autonomous. Now what is happening here is this autonomous one basically plays on its own. Uh, there was no nerve signal or anything that is coming to this autonomous drumstick. The primary one, what it does is it senses like if, if he wants to play the drum, there are some disturbances in his arm, right? In his arm, he's trying to play something. So this signal from his arm is sensed by this primary stick and that plays. And the autonomous one basically in real time listens to how the primary one plays and it plays on his own. Right. So the primary one is listening to his arm signals and it's playing and the autonomous one has no connection with his body. The autonomous one's real time just listens to this primary bit and then it plays on its own. So that was how it was done. Of course, there are a lot of different uh, details on this. Uh, it contains control systems. It contains, uh, uh, you know, um, the machine learning, deep learning part of it. Uh, so all those things come together when this sort of an application comes into the picture. Yes, as Mona Lisa mentioned, so that there is signal processing and that's the signal that's coming from here. Now, how that is doing, let's dig a little more deeper into this project. Uh, I think you won't be able to hear this sound because this is playing in 
uh, this system. Uh, but what basically is happening is you can see the motion here. So this thing is motioning. So he's he wants to whatever he is doing from this hand. So the EMG signal is basically uh, you know comes up from the hand and then this thing plays. So this was the primary stick. So this is the EMG muscle control signal where this is playing. And then the second one here basically just listens to this primary one and then that plays. So again, if we look here. So the primary one listening to the EMG signal, the autonomous one playing on its own. You can see the video here. Unfortunately, you probably won't be listening to music now, uh, but that there is sound that's coming up from here. Now, if we look into a little bit of how this is done, so if we think about in term, in the form of a circuit diagram here, uh, so the drummer is there. Right, so the drummer is uh, playing on his hand, which is working fine, and then there is a prosthetic arm. So both of them are generating the music, and then this music is going to the EMG signal. There is a laptop, and then there are control systems. So there is a PID controller which is being tuned uh, to work perfectly, and that is again uh, closing the loop with the prosthetics. So the it's it's something called human in the loop. Right, and this is like human and computer being interfaced real time together in one application. So there is a drummer, there is a prosthetic primary one which is coming to the picture. The music is done, uh, and the music is again uh, going to the laptop, and then via the laptop, the control systems and all those things are putting together for the autonomous one to perform as well. Right. Uh, again, if you want to know more, uh, there is there are multiple links of this. You can just Google it if you want sort of the demos of these sort of things let us know and then we can share all those as well okay uh, this is uh, just a demonstration um, you know you have been listening to us for a long time if you wanted to hear music we would have done this but i guess again the system is not coming but you can see that he's playing in a live concert um, so that basically fulfilled his dream you know he, he, he can actually play in concert um, and bother about and not in everything is right fine right so this is um, an application where there is control systems right there is a robotic systems there is machine learning because it's um, because the autonomous one is listening and then understanding which music to play uh, and also there are signal processing because everything is signal at the back end here um, so this is one classic example which you can look into later on this is pretty interesting how it works uh, again if you have any questions any details that you want to know or any clarifications please post in the chat window and we can discuss this as well um, now let's see how this thing has to be done this is another example this is from the german aerospace center with whom we worked with and this is a video we'll share this uh, uh, slides anyway so you can see them there uh, what i'm trying to show here in this video so if you go inside here uh, this is a pretty interesting thing i'll just fast forward it and show some of the part here um, so this is a humanoid robot right uh, and then this humanoid robot can do a lot of different tasks like this so this is also what we worked with uh, the center and then so it's like uh, you have hardware integration real time it's a humanoid robot with all the degrees of freedom working together um, so now here there are computer vision, there is image processing, signal processing, the robotic arm development. Um, so you can do all these sort of things, but then we'll say or talk about how you can get started as well. Um, right. So uh, the other thing what we do for all the systems is uh, once we do the simulations, we generate the code automatically. Um, and that's the advantage when, say, for example, when the surgery was done remotely, or if, if you have to create this sort of a humanoid robot or that prosthetic arm, if you have to write codes for everything and then separately integrate with hardware, that takes a lot of time um, and also a lot of um, effort. Uh, the way we do it is using, of course, the apps that Mona Lisa talked about, and there are some other tools, which what it helps is we basically model the entire simulation, and then we integrate with the hardware uh, just by clicking a button. 
so if you want to click with because these are all integration with hardware uh, you can have like a control like human in the loop or that sort of like if you want to control a robotic arm with your hand uh, those sort of things and the robotic arm is a hardware which uh, needs that coding right and the sim model once we developed in simulink we can deploy on the hardware uh, directly and then basically uh, we can do whatever we want to do it by controlling it through the computer um, now the hardwares can be a lot of different type of hardware like you if you are working with arduino raspberry pi or just your android device right we'll talk about some of the examples on each of these things or if you have custom like these examples they have custom hardware right it can be a kuka robot or all those things it can be different types of um, semiconductors right so arm processors um, which are in nvidia and nvidia um, boards or all different type of things so if you are working with hardware and if you're not sure whether your hardware can be integrated with matlab and simulink let us know um, but majority of the hardware you know you can uh, and you could generate the c code of course so if some hardware uh, takes in c codes or c plus plus code you can generate the c code out of a matlab or simulink model directly uh, so how does all these things work like if you have to uh, you know model these things in in matlab simulating do we start from coding or there is an easy way so speaking of that um, has anybody used simulink uh, or simscape or that platform if you can just use like your experience if you can write in the chat window if you have used matlab you can say you have used matlab for this purpose if you have used simulink you can say you have used simulink for this purpose or anything from mathworks like simscape or any of the hardware integration so just write in the chat window if you can write in the chat window of how you have used matlab simulink simscape or anything from mathworks that will be a very useful anybody if you can put in the chat window on your experience with matlab or simulink and simulink uh, or anything anybody if you can put in the chat window or i can have a quick poll uh it doesn't work uh digitizing signals for bci okay thanks uh, dr get them anybody else anybody else has used matlab simulink for anything else if not you can try out all those things definitely in different forms um and the way it operates um, you know let me just show you some of the things uh, so if you have to do these things so uh, you know there are all different types of arms and that can come uh, into the uh, hello Shubhik, yes uh, yes uh, uh, good morning myself dr suraya begum good morning yeah, you are talking about this matlab and the other simulators right right i have right. used actually cloud sim sorry cloud sim cloud sim okay okay I sure have used, uh, cloud uh, sim to test uh, uh, my research related things okay 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 sure Th mm -hmm. thank for your input thanks thank you um yeah so there are multiple different ways all these things can be used and um, if you have something in mind let us know and then we can discuss on those as well um so what we do you know in 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 simulink sort of there is something called simscape which is basically if you want to do all this type of modeling uh, that option is also there um so for example um, you know let me just quickly show you uh, inside the simscape environment how it looks like so if you open up matlab and then this is how we uh, go to simulink uh, the advantage here is again we don't have to write codes and stuff um, so there are multiple ways by which we can um, use uh, you can do signal processing image processing as well and then you can do a bunch of different things so i'll just show you this library browser here um, so say for example if i go to math operations right so you can see there is this absolute there is addition there is bias division and all these things contain something like an input port and an output port so what we can do is say for example if i have to do an addition operation i can just bring this addition block uh, right here so i'm just dragging that thing um, and then now what happens is this addition block is here um, i can just make it bigger and then i have two plus so say for example i can put here constant so that means i'm giving a constant to it um, and i can change the value to something like say five uh connect this to this and then if i want to copy this i can just press control and drag and then connect this here 
So I have five and five, right? So you can change the values. And then if I want to see the output, I use a display block uh, and then connect this. So now what happens is if I run this, or you can see that the output comes up here. Uh, similarly, you can add multiple other stuff as well. So if I add another one, um, you know, so say for example, if I say another constant, um, and then if I say this to be something like three, and if I want to do a minus out of this, so I can add one more here, uh, say minus. So then what happens is I have uh, this, so I have two plus five plus five minus one, right? So then, um, oops, let me just see if this is, yeah, so this is three. Mm -hmm. And then we say it run. So then what happens seven. is five plus five, 10 minus three, seven. So those sort of things that come up here. So we, we are doing this instead of writing codes. Uh, so this is uh, just an addition, but you can see you can do a lot of different things. So if you want to find out absolute values, uh, and also if I go to this continuous, you can do you know integration, derivatives, and PID controls, and all different type of things. Um, now, if I go a little more down here, you can see there is automated driving. Automated driving is also a classic example of human computer interaction. If you want to go in this that direction also. Um, computer visions as well, reinforcement learning. So these are all different types of applications of human computer interaction can come into this picture. Uh, and then for the modeling purpose, what we use is this something called Simscape. So say for example, what here here is the blocks are physical components. So if you are say modeling an electrical system or a mechanical system or a magnetic magnetic system, all those things, the blocks are here. So this is a diode, capacitor. Um, so we can just use those components, build our system. Um, and then what happens is it's easy to like, if that, if you have to model that prosthetic arm, and if I start from a second order derivative differential equation, um, it will probably take my five years to build anything of us arm. But if we do it this way, um, then it becomes easy to scale up. Uh, we can just uh, you know add if you model one arm you can just add another arm you can add another arm and just it's copy pasting essentially um, and then it becomes easy to scale up uh, for that sort of system so we have all these things here all the blog uh, blocks for different type of applications so hydraulics isothermal liquids um, two-phase fluids it depends on your application of course we won't talk about all these things today uh, but this is where it is if you need more information let us know and of course we can discuss with you on your application how you can use these things but this is a very nice tool uh, which becomes very useful for uh, the application you are planning to do uh, now let me just uh, show you how this eventually works i mean of course i won't build from scratch today because that will uh, take up a lot of time now here what we have is uh, you know let me just play this so if i run this you will see what we have so we have these two links right so and you have this visualizations also in as part of this so these are just two links which are connected now if i mean i'm just saying how do you get started to create that sort of a robotic prosthetic arm so you start from here all these systems of course we can share and the point i was saying that uh, you know you can scale these things up the point of scaling this thing up is basically so this is first body and this was the second body so now if i have to add another body what do i do i basically do a control c control v essentially copy pasting um, what these things are, if you are in the robotics domain, you will understand these are, you know, different type of, because if you have these robotic arms, what basically you have are different type of joints. Uh, and that's what we have. So this is basically a rigid transform. This is a revolute joint. This is a, uh, the body. So all those things are just different type of joints and we just connect them in the right way. And once we connect them, so here what I did is just I, uh, you know, copy pasted. So if I copy pasted one, uh, let's see how the video looks like. So you can see I have a third link now. So from going to two links to three links is just a uh, just matter of control C, control V. That's how it makes things easier. If I want it in a different axis, you can change the uh, you know the axis of that uh, of this link. So you can transform this by 90 degree and it will go in this direction. And like this, that works. And all those things just work through these blocks. Uh, so we don't have to write the codes and things like that. So that's that's how easy it becomes when you want to scale up this type of systems. Uh, that's the one thing. So if you want to create this sort of uh, prosthetics or robotic arms, that's how we basically start up um, and create all these things from uh, from this area. And then the, um, so these are these, these are things if you want, we can share all these uh, documents. And the other one is we also have a lot of these examples. Uh, 
you know in our uh, documentation so this is our documentation so i'll just open up a humanoid example so if i click on humanoid you will see what comes up so this is a humanoid robot so if i open this model and also you, you can i mean if you have a, if you are in the robotics domain or if you have autocad designs or something you can just directly import that um, and add your interface like the you control the robot by uh, using the computer you can have your arm integrated with that so integrate your hardware basically um, and all those things can be done by modeling here and then say for example if you want to create something like this uh, this is a human ad robot which is also working uh, pretty well and you can control it via different type of signals as well uh, so if you are in these domains, um, so one is of course using the raw images and the signals and then if you want to design this sort of systems, that option is also there for you. So it depends on what you want to do, what sort of applications you want to cover and then all these different types of things are there which can be taken up. Uh, right. Um, so this is, um, this is one application where we have this humanoid robot thing. Um, there are multiple of these, uh, you know, in this, uh, if you are interested in this, so if you go to Simscape multibody uh, and then in the documentation, actually, you can see there are, uh, you know, here, uh, if I don't go for, you know, uh, all the toolboxes are listed here. So if you just go for like curve fitting, which Monalis have talked about. So if you go here and go for examples, you can see there are a lot of examples on that. Uh, similarly, if you are doing, you know, all these different types of things are there. Deep learning, similarly, starts from get started, which is basically from the word uh, go. So you start from there and then it gradually um, so, uh, scales up to different type of applications. So depending on what you want to do, you can go to all of them. And then in the examples, of course, there are a lot of different type of things which you can try out. Um, so all these things are there. So once you have installed MATLAB, all these things are there. And if you want specific uh, information on any specific examples, let us know. Definitely we can we can work with you on that. Um, on the Simscape modeling part, there are a bunch of different examples as well. So say, for example, if I say Simscape multibody, you can see there are, we talked about the human robot, but there are a bunch of different uh, um, human computer interactions, as we call it, um, which can be done here as well. So all these things can be controlled via uh, via a human input, basically, and and you get those fancy visualizations as well. It depends on what we want to do. Um, like that can be seen. Uh, let me show you one interesting one. It's an there is an elevator example. Uh, so if I just go for elevator and then open this model, um, that's a that's a pretty nice example where you model that entire system of an lift of an elevator. Um, and of course, for all these things, we get that visualization, which also helps you in uh, modeling these things. Um, um, yeah, so this is how it looks like. Um, and then we give an input of uh, the elevator to go from the fifth floor, take a person, people, and then bring them down to the third floor. And then this is basically this belt pulley sort of an arrangement. And you can see that the elevator is going, it will go to the fifth floor, take people in and come back to the third floor. So people are going in. So you can model to that detail here. Um, and that, that that basically helps us in understanding these concepts. So you can do this physical modeling of the simulations. You can do integration of this with machine learning, deep learning, data analytics, um, and create any form of those arms and stuff as well. Um, yeah, again, if you have any questions, clarifications, uh, please post in the chat window. Oops, let me just go back to the slide deck for now. So this is what Simscape is. So you can do all these things in Simscape. So these are things which talked about. Uh, now, uh, when we interface with the hardware, uh, there are a bunch of hardwares uh, which might be useful for you. Uh, so Arduino, the very common one. So what you can do is you can just have an Arduino connected just basically through a USB port. And um, uh, whenever we do something in MATLAB and similarly, we can just connect with the Arduino part. Uh, similarly, for Raspberry Pis, uh, Texas Instruments, BeagleBone, uh, Connect, and all different type of hardware. The only thing you need to do is basically you need to get that Get Hardware Support Package. From where is, if I go to this MATLAB window, and there is this option called uh, Add-ons. So if I go on get on, uh, Add-ons and click Get Add-ons, uh, then what happens is uh, this part comes up and then also this is true for any toolboxes you know a MATLAB is very heavy we all know that it has a lot of size so what you can do is 
uh, you can just install the basic thing you need the first time and later on you can just uh, search for anything here and that will uh, get uh, installed like say for example i don't have my deep learning hdl toolboxes installed in my system so now if i want that i can just click here and that will get installed later on so you can just install whatever you need and later on you can get the rest of the stuff um, now here you can just so if i want arduino i can say arduino um, So, so you can see that there is MATLAB support package for Arduino hardware, Simulink support package for Arduino. So similarly for Android, so if I say Android, uh, then you can see that there is Simulink support package for Android devices, MATLAB support package for Android sensors. And so all these things you can just get from the add-on uh, section of it. Okay. Uh, that's um, about it. And when you connect with the hardware part, then what happens is whatever you have built, uh, you can just control it via the computer. So here, what we are seeing is, you know, this robotic arm uh, is being controlled via the laptop. So it will come to the Simulink environment. So whatever we are doing in Simulink, we are seeing it in the real hardware as well. Uh, and that that is why. So once you do the simulation and then you connect your hardware uh, with the support package and then it becomes uh, work like this. So this is what is happening. So it's in the software world and this is the virtual world. So let me just play it once again. So what you can see here is, um, so you can, if you keep on doing these things, uh, just come do the modeling, connect with the hardware, then finally what happens is you have the simulation world and the hardware world both working at the same time. Right? So that that's what is happening here. Okay, so that, that's basically um, the application that you can go to in the form of after doing these modelings. Okay. Um, rest of the things, uh, you, if you are in this domain, there are multiple things called, uh, if, uh, say for example, if you're into autonomous drivings and those sort of things, uh, then we use something called ROS, Robotic Operating System. So uh, we integrate with ROS. So if you are working with, I'm not going to detail because this is probably a little bit of niche, but this comes in the human computer interface because autonomous driving is one application of that. Uh, so if you're working on that, what happens is with MATLAB simulating, we connect with ROS and then with ROS, we connect with other sort of simulators like gazebo and things like that. So we cover it, all these things. So sense sensing, Perceive, perception, decide, and act. So all the steps which are involved in this autonomous design are covered uh, in this workflow. Okay. Uh, so that that's about how we can do all this sort of simulation environment and then simulate these designs. Um, and the important part here is when we are integrating with this hardware, we are automatically deploying it. So you don't have to do anything in the form of write a separate code for that hardware. So automatically the C or C++ code will be generated and deployed onto the hardware. Um, okay. Um, and you can also do uh, things like integrate this with uh, machine learning, deep learning, and that's typically called reinforcement learning, right? So that's another sort of things where you integrate all these things together and you can model this sort of a robot. This is done by, um, I mean, we don't need any training data when you are doing this reinforcement learning. So it learns on its own. Um, and then you can have this sort of a robot which can walk on your uh, on the straight line or any other form of applications. So this is called reinforcement learning, which is typically integration of this robotics um, control systems with a machine learning deep learning application okay so that's something which you can do as well uh, so these all these things are there so this is a typical reinforcement learning workflow which you can cover as well and we support that as well through matlab simulating uh, i won't go into the details how you can do this so this is how the apps looks like if you want to do a deep learning network and you can connect that with the simulink network as well so all these things work together uh, pretty extensively so you can do a bunch of different things, right? Uh, so this is automatic driving. So you can see the steering is not being controlled by anybody. So we have gone to that level where a car can drive on its own. Uh, this is solving a puzzle. This robotic arm is sol solving a puzzle on its own. We talked about a little bit of this prosthetics arm as well. So there are multiple ex examples of that. And this is all there. So these are all different types of human computer interaction where we integrate machine learning, deep learning, different type of data with uh, robotics control systems. Uh, together to form all these type of applications. If you want to play around with this, uh, so Mona Lisa talked about with the human activity recognition, right? So inside MATLAB, uh, again, in the MATLAB window, if you search for human activity uh, recognition, right, in the documentation, 
uh, that uh, we all talked about the documentation pretty say, uh, exhaustive here so if you go here you can see that there is a human um, activity recognition simulating model for smartphone deployment so this open live script will uh, mona lisa again talked about opening live script so you can open it up and you can run it there. so these are all there for you you can play with them um so here after doing all those things we just put it into a simulink model and connect with the android so what happens is my phone also contains this app now so say for example it uh, it takes the sensor data the accelerometer data and it will tell you whether i'm standing whether i'm sitting whether i'm running so this is when it is deployed on android so the only thing you need to do is you have to connect it with your android device so you have to add go to that add on select the android device and run that installation so you connect with your android and then what happens once you have the matlab model you take it to simulink and once you have it in simulink you connect your android phone and then transfer this app to simulink uh, to android so in your android phone you will have this you, you don't need the android uh, uh, basically you need to have, don't need to have matlab in your uh, phone to run this app so this app will work on its own the matlab mobile will help you to gather the sensor data without that this app doesn't work but the apps in general can work on its own when you deploy it on the android device uh so that's that's one thing which you can all do uh because these the, these things are all there you have access to this because of these are all the in the example files uh the other thing is if you are working on iot so we have something called thingspeak right so thingspeak is the matlab platform for uh, internet of things so you can also take data you can have channels so you can just get started for free here um and once you log in with your macros account you can see that this contains multiple public channels as well so from the public channels you can just get in the data to your matlab and then process them or you can push your data to this thingspeak channels as well um so thingspeak is that platform for uh, internet of things iot Uh, so feel free to explore that uh, and there are simulating blocks for things pick read and things pick write okay uh, so things pick read things pick write and there are also matlab commands if you want to do them in matlab um so that's on the things pick front so you can convert um, you know this uh, this uh, human activity recognition this thing you can do uh, you can put in your android app you can push the data into your things pick as well so all those different type of things can be done with uh, with once you have built the system so you can see here it takes up the sensor data and it tells whether somebody is walking whether somebody is sitting standing running all those things based on the acceleration it takes from the sensor and that can be pushed to the things pick as well uh, we talked already about the hardware support package i will skip here for this one um so in terms of data analytics just to sum things up uh in matlab and simulink workflow these things are made pretty easy so if you have to access data you can handle big amount of data pre processing the data finding out which algorithm works best for your data integrating with systems so if you want to put it in the c or c++ code integrate with hardware so all those things are pretty easily taken care of in inside matlab and simulink uh you can work with all different types of data as mentioned earlier so you have all different types of data so we work with all different types of data and in a user friendly format so you don't have to worry too much about the data and also big data there are multiple ways by which we can handle big data so if you have a lot of data there are ways which we can avoid any errors of out of memory and so on and so forth uh which can be done as well um this this part interactive high uh, app driven workflows makes things pretty easy uh, because uh, you don't have to write codes and the other thing is um, if you have machine learning deep learning and you want to integrate that with you know traditional engineering like uh, controls and things like that that becomes pretty easy as well because when you are doing a human computer interaction like that prosthetic arms or automated driving these things become critical and that becomes very useful because of this uh, workflow of matlab plus simulink together if you want to build a system like that um yeah so these different type of uh, if you just have to sum up in the machine learning language uh, so these are all the different steps and all the different steps are taken care of in one platform right in matlab um, and simulink both you can do all these things together and using this apps uh, because um, when you are using machine learning deep learning and if you have to learn about all the svms all the decision trees uh, then uh, we might run behind in forming that final application uh so just um, if you want to focus on the application at hand and you want to use this interactive app so that we address the final goal uh, more clearly and fast that that helps in this entire workflow so we call it like end to end workflow so if you want to solve that workflow from the beginning to the end uh, from starting the data collection to basically deployment and then in between all the things for the application that that's taken care of this 
um and during the teachings uh, area as well because as you with the national education policy education policy and all those things what has happened is there is a hard uh, need there's a very uh, big amount of need uh, uh, from the government from different sort of uh, agencies that we need to go for ai and ai for engineering applications it can be healthcare um, you know agriculture finance all different type of applications and that's what we also focus on like using ai for all those different applications um and so that basically students understand the concepts behind this so treat ai like a mathematics which can be used for that skill uh, for the application we are trying to do for all those different type of models and things and that um and that's what we want to do in terms of so we also create a lot of curriculum so our team monalis and i we are in that team we work with academicians with faculties on creating more hands on curriculums uh, making research more going fast and when if you get stuck you can reach out to us as well so all those different things so if you want more help on all these things on having clear learning outcomes of a course uh, we can work together on developing the curriculum as well and because of all this we are proud to say that you know our math using matlab and simulink mathworks has been recognized by this uh, consortium of gartner as a leader in uh, data science uh, you can see here that and that that helps for us as well um it has also been listed in uh, in the top 11 programming languages um uh, so there is a part of programming language and as talked about in a simul simulink simscape so you can integrate those two as well so we have those two things which can work uh, hand in hand Uh, so we talked about integrating with systems, generating hardware code with uh, C, C++, CUDAs for NVIDIA platform, HDL, PLCs. Uh, you can also create a lot of apps. You can create your own apps. Uh, you can integrate with your web apps, Excels, uh, production servers. So these are more with real-time systems. If you want to do, let us know, and then we can discuss uh, uh, those on as well. now getting started this is where we will end so there are a lot of these courses which are all free um and then they most of them run in the browser apart from uh, i mean this matlab on ram machine learning deep learning reinforcement image processing so we talked about you know touched on these things so if you are very new to matlab just starting on then this is the best course to get started then you have simulink machine learning deep learning so these are all in the link here uh, so you can go to them Uh, you get a certificate at the end of this course uh, you can have the students do this as part of uh, you know something that the, as a course uh, prerequisite so they can learn these things and then then implement hands on uh, each of them takes around 2 hours to complete but these are self paced that means it's not like you have to do at a tandem uh, we can do like you know 5% today 5% in the evening 10% tomorrow like this we can go um so all these courses are very very uh, useful uh, and we are coming up with them so you can see there are many of them are new as well uh so feel free to go through them feel free to, to suggest this to the students so to get this uh, to get them introduced to how to use matlab and these are not like like lectures these are all hands on it tells how to do and then it uh, uh, the the participant has to do the course uh, the assignment and once somebody does it correctly then it moves to the next set assignment and that's how it works out um uh, okay so we are on the top of the hour so we'll end here uh thank you so much for listening uh, we are here for uh, some more time as well if you have any questions interactions uh, please let us know uh, but if you want to connect with us later on these are our email ids uh, so feel free to reach out to us at any point of time as well we'd be happy to discuss and please fill out the feedback form um, monal is posted in the chat window it's there here as well uh, it would be great to have the feedback uh thank you from us if you have any thoughts questions uh, we are we are open to that as well any thoughts any questions um, or we can just end
May this, uh, do, do you have any questions or? Uh, uh, so actually, we got disconnected. Okay. So participants, is there any question? Participants, please ask your questions. Okay, so I hope uh, there are no further questions. Uh, so we'd like to <coughs> conclude the session here. So thank you. Uh, uh, thank you the entire networks team uh, for your support and providing the talk. And it was a great experience to hear from you and learn from you. So, uh, I hope uh, all the participants, uh, those who are already using MATLAB, so for them it is not new platform, but at least uh, uh, the remaining participants for uh, whom the platform is new, so they have got some idea or might be using because uh, nowadays the MATLAB is available online also. So I hope it is a beneficial uh, uh, talk for everyone. And I would like to thank the Metrox team uh, for their effort. And uh, from the entire team of Human Centered Computing and Department of EC and as a whole Guwahati University, uh, we thank you. We thank you for all your support. Thank you. And definitely in future also, we would like to continue uh, communicating with you. Thank you. Thank you for being a part. And uh, I should have uh, named it earlier also. Uh, I'd like to thank Prasun Ganaji sir for all his help because uh, whatever uh, connections uh, we had with MATLAB all went through him only. So thank you sir. <laughs>